Today on Locked on Steelers, Omar Khan seems really strong about the idea that the Steelers aren't trading down. Is that a mistake? Is that a smokescreen? We'll talk about all of that and the other comment that were made by him and Mike Tomlin on Monday here on the Tuesday episode of the Locked on Steelers podcast and more big board talk. And we've got Alan Saunders from SteelersNow.com to do it. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show in your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Get, get, download Game Time app today and you can create an account and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase when you're getting tickets on the Game Time app. More on them later. We're joined by Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. It's draft week. It's Tuesday of draft week. And the Steelers took to the podium on Monday just to talk to, to some of the reporters. I wasn't there. I had some other PG duties to do for the Post-Gazette. But Alan Saunders was there. And one of the interesting takeaways I had from what was said, Alan, was the stance of Omar Khan saying that they're not, they're not feeling the whole trade down idea. Now, I posted this on Twitter, uh, just the idea of, hey, uh, and this was before this press conference, this was just kind of just thinking out loud and just saying like, yeah, let's have some fun and see what people think about things. And I, I asked people to rank, if you had to rank choices, not who they're picking, but what you'd like them to do in general with the 20th overall pick, I said, A, you could stay at 20, B, you could trade up, C, you could trade back, D, you could trade for a vet, opening up the IU trade. The majority of people slightly chose the trade back option and then stay at 20 and then trade for a vet and then trading up. It seems like no one's down, down for the trade up, to, but it seems like a lot of people are down for the trade down option. And I think it's particularly because they want to be able to move up to get a center in the second round. If they don't get it, get it in the first Allen, do you buy that Omar Khan's actually not for the trading down thing? Or is that just one of the many smoke screens we see in draft season? No, you know what? That one stood out to me as well as soon as he said it as something that was sounded authentic. That seemed like that was his trick. You could almost kind of like hear the disgust in his voice when he was talking about <laughs> the idea of trading that, you know, I, I would say, you know, you, you don't ever want to trade away from a good player. And I'm like, well, I've seen the board and I, they're going to like get you can't a lot of good players. make a board for a, a, an actually uh my my colleague Derek Bell put on X yesterday like a little thought like hey what's the worst case scenario for the Steelers picking at 20 and you know what like the worst case scenario is still pretty good like it's it's yeah. hard to come up with a true worst case scenario right and so i think if if, if Omar's going to say like hey, trade down maybe if it's a terrible board like it's not going to be a terrible board there's going to be a good BPA. And the other thing is he's talking about like, Hey, best player available position to need their positions of need line up with the board perfectly. There will certainly be a tackle or a center or wide receiver or a corner or a defensive tackle. In fact, there could well be all five of those things. And so like given what he said, the way he said it, yeah, I understand this, this is lying season. And uh, there were certainly some fabulous ones told on Monday. Uh, but I don't, I didn't get the sense that that was one of them. And look, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, look at what the Steelers have done, even though they've traded a lot more in recent years, you could sort of see that mindset of Omar Khan becoming more prevalent before he took over as general manager. You kind of see the influence there as Kevin Colbert did trade more than yet. They still never trade down in the first round. Like, ne like they've done it. They haven't done it since Casey Hampton. Like this is just not a thing did, that the team did they does. Trade down for Holmes? Maybe for Holmes too. I think no. I think that might have been one of the one. But but again, that's how few it ha few times it happens is that you got to go back to either say Antonio Holmes or Casey Hampton. Like no one that's touched the era of Steelers that we're in now. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's been a very long time, and um, you know it, it's it's not. I don't I don't I don't necessarily. I think I agree with that stance. I think I look and see what some teams have done in terms of stockpiling draft picks, and I think. You can see 
the benefits of doing that. I think that's probably why, you know, a lot of the kinds of fans that are going to be heavily involved in, you know, theoretical draft discussions would probably be very into it, right? So that, that's that's why maybe you see the results of your poll the way you do. But um, I, I believe the Steelers on that one. When they say they're not that into trading back, well, hi- history bears that out, right? I mean, the, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, yeah, I think that that's where – I, I, I completely agree with you in the sense that they don't have to trade back unless they unless they feel like some, there's something there's some nefarious plan that they have in play that that everyone's gonna be like wait a second how'd they pull that off um, you know but I, I think reality and I talked about this on on the on my Monday show here but like the, even like you said there is no way for this board to fall like even if all six tackles go that means. There's going to be some corners out there or some receivers. There's going to be some ridiculous player. You're like, well, if you're just going to hand me that guy that they're going to they're going to be there. And I saw, you know, some of the the names that Derek was posing, like like, you know, Adonai Mitchell, you know, as, as a guy that he loved to see taken at, at 20. But like, let's say, like you know, let's say that there's a run at corners. Guess what? That means some of the tackles are going to be available. It, it's why I keep thinking that Talise Fuaga or Talise Fuaga might be one of those guys for a guy. He's a little bit shorter than six, six. So people are, are wondering if he'll play tackle, if he gives up too much pressure off the edge. And I'm like, look. If everyone else lets him go, and I've done I've done now three different expert mock drafts for the Locked On Podcast Network. I've done one for like a random radio show that another radio show that, that had me on, and I did one for the Raiders Radio Network. And each time Fuaga was there, and I don't know if that's just the the experts of the other teams that were picking just saying ah, I don't need him, but that like when that happened for a third time, I was like I don't know. This feels like a sign to me, or this feels like like like. There, there are people out there that are just thinking, ah, not for me, not for me. And I think Fuaga, there's plenty of GMs out there that probably like that probably like him a lot. And I'm, I wouldn't be shocked if he goes in the top 15, let alone the top 20, let top 19 before the Steelers get picked. But I just think there's going to be someone there of great value. And so it makes sense if the Steelers don't want to trade back in the first round. However, I do think they need to be open to trading up in the second. And I think that they have ammunition to do that with their extra third round pick. And we've also seen them trade back in later rounds. In fact, we saw it last year, right, where yep. the Steelers moved back in the third round and still got Darnell Washington to recoup that pick that they lost by trading up in the first round. So, like, maybe the 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 idea here is trade up in the second round and trade out of the third with one of those two third round picks to make up for the the pick they have to give up in the second. I could see something like that happening, um, or just staying put. You know, I I don't know. I don't know that Omar Khan, like, that doesn't seem like Omar Khan, but I also think, like, look, the same things I said about the way the board breaks in the first round are likely going to be true in the second round. Maybe Zach Frazier's there and maybe he's not, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be wide receivers there at 51. I'm pretty sure there's going to, maybe Braden Fisk will be there. Maybe, you know, like, there's there's going to be good players at, you know, and so, I don't know, if you're just dead set against trading down, um, you don't have to be, I don't think, with these four picks in the top 100. I, I certainly think that you don't. Ha- you're right. You don't have to be uh, too too locked in on any on anything because there's a lot of opportunities there. Granted, I think the center position is a big set part of that conversation. At the center of that conversation, maybe even. Right. But that was exactly. You see what I'm putting down. But I think that there's there was also some interesting comments about the center position and. It's more smoke screens that I think that need to be addressed. We'll address that and a few other things between the Steelers comments right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Chris Carter, your host here with Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. Stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, I want to remind you this show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the app you can download right to your phone where you can have buying tickets to your favorite events without it being stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They give you killer deals on last minute tickets and they have a best price guarantee that can't be beat. And you can save up to 60% off up to buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, sporting events, concerts, and so many other things going on. And especially if you're in Pittsburgh, Game Time is giving great prices for Pirates games right now. If you see what Jared Jones is dealing, you want to get excited for Paul Skeens coming up in the minors. 
guess what? Game Time is going to give you amazing discounts. Just go, just go on to GameTime.co, the website, or download the Game Time app right to your phone. You can also get ready for all the big concerts coming your way this, this, this summer, like the Kenny Chesney concert that everyone always gets excited for. All tickets that you can get on Game Time, plus even smaller events out there that, that you that you think might be out there. Game Time offers great options, and Game Time has the best price guarantee where if you find tickets in the same section and row for less somewhere else, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference of those prices. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase or go to their website, GameTime.co. Term and conditions apply. Create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We're back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, with Alan Saunders here from SteelersNow.com. Alan, I am sick and tired of people playing in my face. And I think that's what the Steelers are doing every time they open their mouths about the center position. This is not the uh, yesterday was not the first time that they insinuated, oh, we're kind of fine with the center position. We have interior options on the roster already. You and I have covered this. If they had interior options, when Mason Cole was snapping the ball to the feet of Kenny Pickett and Mr. Trubisky and Mason Rudolph last year and giving up pressures up the middle in a gap, they would have used that option at some point last year or the year before, but they have not. And that tells me, they are fibbing right now. I don't believe them. I think it's their way of trying to, to, to pose to the NFL that they aren't in a serious need of the center position to try to mask over what they're actually what their real plans are. However, I do think that they're in a position where, like you said, because of the value of the of, the, of the, how the board could fall to their picks this year, they are not in a position where I think that this bluff can come back to bite them too hard unless they completely miss out on it on all the rounds because everyone's just jumping ahead of them and taking centers every single round. And then they're like, well, I guess we just got to settle for, you know, Nate Herbig or James Daniels playing center or Nate or, or bring back Mason Cole or something here. Do you think there is a way where they bluff? Because like, for example, the Bears, they bluffed about Justin Fields. Oh, we want a first. Oh, we want a second. And then eventually they got a sixth. Um, you know, like I don't think, but I don't think there's a clear way that this happens unless there is some major effort across the league to freeze the Steelers out of getting a center. I don't really like. So I mean, look, it's really, really hard to take the words for granted when the same person said on February 29th that he had full faith in Kenny Pickett and <laughs> then signed Russell Wilson on March 10th. Okay. Like that's 11 days. You don't have to go from full faith to signing a guy who won a Super Bowl to play his position for him. Um, so look, I like Omar, but like, I'm, this is nonsense. Now, is it a degree of nonsense? I think maybe. And, and so is Pickett to some extent, right? Like, I think I I definitely think that the fan base has put the need of center on a bigger pedestal than the Steelers themselves see it. Um, I, I think they are going to be more comfortable letting things play out at the center position than I think most people think they will be. Like, here's where I think this is headed is like, I, I really think this is. You know, they're going to make a pick at number 20 on Thursday night, and then uh, there's going to be a press conference, and Omar Khan and Mike Tomlin are going to be talking to us, and the question is going to come up again. Hey, why didn't you take a center? And they're going to say, hey, mm. we believe in our internal options, and we wanted best player available at the position of need. And it might even be possible that we do that same song and dance on Friday. Like, I think that when they brought Hunter Norzad in for a visit, who's like a fifth-round guy, Yeah, like, to me, that's like, hey, you know, Mason McCormick, they don't need a guard, so they're looking at him as a center. He's like a fourth or fifth round guy, sixth round guy. They, they, they could let this thing play out and find their center where they find it. I don't necessarily know that I like agree with that stance, but I think they're certainly setting themselves up to say, hey, look, man, we believe in them. Take it easy. We'll get to one when we get to one. 
And look, this is the same. I mean, I understand it's a different general manager, but this is the same organization that did this in 2021. Like they just they just did. They waited till the fourth round to get their center, and it didn't work. Yeah. And so I don't know that we should be on board with them following this plan. But it's again, like I said, with the trade down, is like sometimes people just show you who they are. Am I saying that they actually believe in Nate Herbig? No, because like you said. They don't believe in Nate Herbert because they didn't give him a chance to play. But I do think that they don't – they are not panicked about who plays at center. Maybe they just don't think center is that important. Maybe they think they'll get one wherever they get one. That there is a, Omar said there are a handful of guys that he think will be starters in this class this year. Handful means five. Like that. that so we've not been talking about this center class like it is five deep. Wait, handful 20... means five. I always thought it meant like three or four. No, five hand, hand, five. Uh, like, but hand, but like hand, four, five. I don't know, man. It depends. Like, are these Kenny Pickett hands that can't hold five things, or are these like you know, like gargantuan hands that can hold everything? Because then you got I mean, oh, seven. But anyway, Patrick, I shook hands with Patrick Paul at the senior bowl. Those hands could fit like an entire like draft class in the okay. Game. There you go. Um I think I think he I think there's a belief from the Steelers that there are more than just these top guys that could be options to play center right away. That that the some of the sec, like look, they didn't bring in Tanner Bordellini and Bo Limmer, but they also don't usually bring in guys that are third day picks. Like th- there are not a lot of if you go look at the 30 visits, you you look at the combine formals, there are just not a lot of guys that are gonna be taken after the fourth round that, that are in them, but maybe they think someone like that can be a plug and play option at center that they don't need to reach to get one. I just, the more that they've gone on in this process, I think they're going to be patient about center and let it come to them. And I don't think they're going to reach for one. And so if that means that, Hey, the first pick is a tackle because that's BPA and the second pick. Oh, well, somebody took Zach Frazier. There's lots of good wide receivers. Let's go that way. And then the third pick is maybe Cedric Van Pran. Maybe who knows? I, I don't get the sense that they would be freaking out about that playing out that way like i'm sure most of the fan base would be as we get through the draft on friday i think that that's where i think you're right the steelers aren't going to be panicking because they're going to have their plan their plan in place whereas steelers fans will be like they they just they just see creed humphrey going to the chiefs again like oh come on not again not again this can't happen again guys but i do think the steelers have something up their sleeve to get the center that they really want in this draft class. And it might not involve any of the guys we've talked about. Like, you know, we've, I've talked a lot about Graham Barton, Jackson Powers Johnson, Zach Frazier, Cedric Van Pran. It might be Hunter Norzet. It might be Ted Bordellini. It might be someone else that we're not even thinking of right now. But I, I do think the Steelers need to land that position. If they are serious about being a run dominant team, a, a team that can bully people, not just this year, but for some years to come, I think it would really help them to get a strong moving center who gets, who's athletic, who's, who's, who's tough in the middle and can change the line of scrimmage for them as well as getting a tackle. And that doesn't mean you're passing up on a tackle to get a center. I think that they need to find a way to get it done. But as I, I, I brought this up on Monday, I, I think their extra third round pick gives them the leverage to do this. It doesn't even need to be one of the third round picks that gets traded. But if you're sitting there in the second and you're saying, Hmm, Zach Frazier is the last one we really believe in to be a plug and play guy right now. And maybe Cedric Van Pran is another guy they really believe in too. But you can trade the fourth with the second to move up to ego. And then that way, yes, you lose a fourth round pick. But guess what? You got two thirds. And so you're still going to get four players inside the top 100 that can be guys that are most likely projected to give you help sooner rather than later in, in, in your, in, in your, uh, on your roster. And to me, that needs to be where, where things are. But, and again, I just I don't buy that. And I don't buy them saying like, oh, we think we, we're, we're good at de- with the developers developing receivers on our roster. I don't buy that either. They need to go get somebody at, at wide receiver. They know it. I know it. You know it. Uh, they may have some guys that they think are better than what other people believe. But man, I just I, I, I get that they're doing some smoke screens here. But if you're if you're looking close enough, and I don't think you have to even look that close. You could tell, I think, that they like they like it if they didn't have to have some of these problems. I will say the big difference between the center and the wide receiver position is that if they don't get the wide receivers they want in the draft, there are other wide receivers. They'll call Tyler Boyd back up and be like, actually, mm-hmm. 12 million will work for us if, if you could do that. <laughs> uh, you know, like like that. They, there are other DJ charts out there. there. There's there's like OBJ. There's still, 
I mean, look, I'm not I'm jumping for joy about a lot of those options, but they exist. There are players out there where if they don't get them one they want in the draft or the kind of receiver they want, you know, like they brought in so many different types of players at the wide receiver position that it makes me think they may be targeting two. Like they might want more than one even um, because like how do you want, you know, tiny like slot guys and also be targeting like big outside receivers? You know, they, they brought them all in. And so – I think wide receiver has a lot more flexibility uh, than center. Center just feels like they have to draft one. I don't know what they're doing if they're not. And um, I, I I think this has been a very strange way to address the center position, starting with releasing Mason Cole without a replacement for saving basically no cap money that they, they never spent. And I really think – I agree with you that they 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 likely have some kind of plan, but I think they've put themselves in a position where um, people are going to be rightfully critical if that plan doesn't come to fruition because it seems like a lot of this has been self made. I agree, and, and they should be critical if this doesn't work out and that they and they have problems at center last year. They had ways to address it, and they have not. But again, maybe they have a plan. Uh, they certainly had a plan last year with some of the moves that they pulled off, and it, and it worked out then. We'll get to more of that here. But I want to look at some big board options. We're going to play a game in the next one just to get, get some mixing and matching. But we have, we have a mix and match board. I want to see who Alan picks with these options that I give him. We'll do that the rest of the way uh, throughout the rest of the, 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 the week going into the draft here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Stick with us. We still have a lot to discuss. But first, I want to remind you that this show is brought to you by BetterHelp Therapy. BetterHelp is the place that you can go to to find BetterHelp whenever, whenever you're looking for it. Sometimes in life, there's more burdens than, than you can count. And sometimes you need to find ways to balance it all. And it can be time. Sometimes I have a hard time finding extra time to do things that I simply enjoy to do, like reading or going 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 for a run or just hanging out at the, at the right times. That can be a lot on your brain to have to have to balance. And that's where therapy can help you find what matters most to you and help you organize your life so that you could do more of that. I benefited from the help of good therapists in my life that it helped me sort out the most important things that I try to balance every single day. And that's why you need to try try therapy and try better help as the best way to get it, get it started with therapy. BetterHelp knows that life can be busy and stressful, so it's designed to be suitable for your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make no, learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. We're also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook. In America, it's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL, and baseball is in full swing. That makes FanDuel your place to bet on every game in every league. Right now, new customers get to get one hundred and fifty dollars back in bonus bets guaranteed with your first bet, win or lose. That's one hundred and fifty bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all in an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Just download, just download the FanDuel app on your phone or go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and you'll make sure the first bet that is an automatic win as soon as you make it. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on for new customers to get $150 back in bonus bets guaranteed. And that's from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Back on, back on the Locked on Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We've got Alan Saunders from SteelersNow.com. We're going to play a game here, Alan. I want to get your thoughts on this. We're going to do this throughout the rest of the week now. First of all, if anyone out there is not following me on Twitter and Instagram, at Carter Critiques, first of all, get your life together. Second of all, get, follow me. But third of all, we've been we, we, I posted this, this image that I'm about to put on the screen, and I'll, we'll break it down also for our audio listeners because it's a little fun game we like to play. I played this last year where we have a mix and match board where we have – each each of the Steelers' first four picks, and then we have on 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 the, in the columns, and then each yeah, we have four rows for each position top position of need for the Steelers to choose between. So I'll put it on the screen here. I'll explain through it. So you have all of the all the positions here: offensive tackle, corner, wide receiver, and center. The four top positions that the Steelers have been looking at, and in each row. 
You have a player who who I think will, is at least close enough to being selected in in the in those slit in those slots. So you have, just to be clear, you have the first round at the 20th overall pick, the second round at the 51st overall pick, the third round at 84th overall, and again in the third round with the 98th overall pick. At tackle in the first round, you have options like Amarius Mims. You have Tyler Guyton in the second, Blake Fisher for your first third round pick, and Patrick Paul for your third or for your second third round pick. At corner, you got Nate Wiggins as your first as your first rounder Mike Sandra still as your as your second rounder Kyrie Jackson as your first third rounder and Jerry and Jones as your thir- second third rounder at wide receiver you got Adonai Mitchell as your first round option Roman Wilson as your second rounder Javon Baker out of Central Central Florida as your third first third rounder and then Brendan Rice Jerry Rice's son out of USC as your second third rounder and then finally at center your first rounder is Graham Barton second rounder Zach Frazier third rounder Cedric Van Pan and fourth rounder is Hunter Norzad, who we mentioned, or not your th- second, third rounder is Hunter Norzad. So all these options, we will flip these every single day. There will be a new one, mix and match with other options because there are other guys that fit other positions. But Alan, if this, let's say this was how it was to play out, and you can only choose one of each position uh, for for each of the rounds. So one tackle, one corner, one receiver, one center. What would you prioritize, and wh- what would be your haul with these players assembled on the screen? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, look, I think Amarius Mims is the best player on the board. I think if Amarius Mims had like another five games of tape, he'd be a top 15 pick. I think if he had another 10 games of tape, he'd be a top 10 pick. And so I understand that there's some uncertainty with drafting him just because the level of experience is so low, but the tape is dominant. It comes, comes against high level opposition. It is a position of premium value. I think that is, um, probably the thing that I think stands out to be the most when I look at the characteristics of Omar Khan and what they're likely to do. I, I, it's just a player I really like. I think he flips Broderick Jones to the left side, which the Steelers have said they want to do. I, I really think he is a pretty much perfect first round pick for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, you can certainly make arguments to go other directions. Um, but I, for me, he's the guy that I think um, they should hope is there that they should want. And I, Look, I think he has a chance to become a really, really good starter. I think if you go with tackle, like the idea, you know, is is normally like go go right back to center with Zach Frazier. And I have a hard time arguing against that. In fact, I've been arguing since the middle of the college football season that I think Zach Frazier is the best center in the country. Um, Mm -hmm. I understand that he's not been talked about like that and I understand that he does not have the athletic upside that a player like Graham Barton does that a player like um, a Jackson Powers Johnson does, but he is a better technical center than Jackson Powers Johnson. Barton's obviously never, I mean, I, I you know, not since his freshman year has played center. In terms of like, who do I want to line up to play center right now this week, give me Zach Frazier over the whole class, let alone the options at 51. And so, look, I don't think he's going to be there, but if you're telling me I can get Zach Frazier with pick 51, that is 100% what I'm going to do. Um, I'm a little up in the air about these last two. I'll go with Javon Baker uh, at 84. I actually like don't think that's great value, and I, I probably wouldn't normally want to take him there. Um, but I'm I'm down to corner and and wide receiver, and I think wide receiver is the more important need for the Steelers. I also think like Kyrie Jackson is just the wrong type of corner for them to be targeting in this class. He's a lot like a lot of the corners that the Steelers have targeted in the past. These mm. lengthy um fast guys that maybe like don't always have the best technique and there's you know there's you know you look at the the height and the speed and the physicality you're like how's this guy in the third round well it's because sometimes the guy goes right past him that's how he's in the third round (laughs) and their track record on developing that type is not exactly great and so um and they have a bunch of those not just joey porter jr but Corey trice and darius rush are also very much cut from the same cloth uh, whereas Jerry and Jones is a different type of corner. He's more of a natural fit in the slot, which is where I think the Steelers' bigger need is right now. And plus, he has a natural connection with the new Steelers assistant defensive backs coach, who was previously his position coach. So I think there's a, a natural gravity there. I like him. And and I, again, I think Brendan Rice, 
very much the same player as George Pickens, a guy who doesn't get a lot of separation, makes a lot of combat catches, big physical on the outside. But I just think like Kyrie Jackson and Brendan Rice to me are good players, and I, I like them both, but I think they're more like what the Steelers already have. So I'll go Baker and Jones to try to vary up the skill sets at receiver and corner. So just to be clear, Alan Saunders went with Amarius Mims, Zach Frazier, Javon Baker, and Jerry and Jones as his options here. I have a hard time arguing with that with that lineup there because I, I too think Amarius Mims is the best player on the board here, just overall that I assembled. Also, again, this is not saying that all these guys are going to be here. Like, like, like Alan said, I don't think Zach Frazier will be there at 51, but I figured this would be at least a fun way to experiment to see like what your priorities would be, you know, and kind of organize like, Hey, if you pick such and such player in the first round, these are who you're going to have to deal with after that uh, at these other key positions, if you want to address them. So that's kind of what this exercise allows us to do. But I agree. Mims is, is the second round pick, but I, you know, it's funny. I really like Zach Frazier too, but I wonder if Cedric Van Pran can be an answer there. And I really, really, really like Roman Wilson. I think that Roman Wilson... See, because I was going to say, if I went that way, I think I'd be taking Mike Sanders still. Oh. He is just a perfect Pittsburgh he, Steelers he, slot corner. He'd be a perfect slot corner. I mean, he is he is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, like, I do like Roman Wilson people. a lot, too. Uh, the, don't the, the, there's, Those are good options in the second round. But if I was going to go Van Pran, I think I would go Sanders still first and then then take brennan rice at the end sarah still's really good he is really, really good Mich michigan got some dogs in this draft man there's, there's some really good players that they got there but again that's the whole fun of this exercise is that there, there's all these different options like say you went adonai mitchell in the first round then you can say oh well maybe maybe then you get zach frazier then blake fisher and then you still wind up with jerry and jones but hey if you want if you want to take a look at this uh, on social media and let me know what you think go to at carter critiques on twitter and, and instagram you do either there i posted it on either one also the locked on Steelers Facebook group I posted it there so all the different platforms actually when you see it there go ahead check out the check out the mix and match board let me know what your pick pick would be there Alan that was a little fun exercise there we had some fun playing playing around there and uh Alan uh just wanted to get you before we send you out of here wanted to let you know, let, let give you a chance to let people know what else is coming their way and why everyone needs to tune into SteelersNow.com as they're getting ready for the Steelers picks in the NFL draft yeah, I got the big, uh, let's see, Derek Bell's big board's coming out today. Actually, if you're watching this, it's probably already out. And then uh, my first round mock draft, I'll do three rounds, but the first round is the thing that everybody cares about. I have, I've got the weight. I've got the weight on the shoulders. I was, I was, I had the fifth best mock draft of the country last year. They're going to be coming for me. I've got to come through again. I probably won't, but uh, we'll see, see how good I can do. Absolutely. He's Alan Saunders. Find him at SteelersNow.com. Alan, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you all for joining us here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, post-gazette.com. Find me here on the Locked on Steelers podcast every day, Monday through Friday, bringing down your Pittsburgh Steelers. We're back tomorrow with another episode here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. See you then. <laughs> 